Hi folks, we had a question come in. How do I model a two-piece shaft collar like this in Fusion 360? So the awesome thing about parametric cam is there's so many ways you can model a part like this. We're gonna start by showing the way I think you should do it and why that has some benefits, but also show a couple of different strategies throughout the way. But before all of that, we're gonna copy and paste that master card part number because there's a chance you don't need to model it at all. Go to insert McMaster car component, paste that value. Go to product detail. We're going to choose the step from the drop down menu, hit save, and that component is going to magically pop up as a component within Fusion. Now stick around to the end of the video because there's a really cool trick that I'm going to show on more things that you can do with this. But for now, we're going to switch over and show how would you actually model this part. So we'll do a new component. We can hide our McMaster version. Hit S on your keyboard and type in center. That's a keyboard shortcut to bring up a center or rectangle. Now it's asking us what plane we're going to sketch it on. And I want to sketch it on the plane that's between the green and the red or the YX plane. Sketch a box over here. And we can actually cheat and use the McMaster dimensions to see that that's 7 eighths of an inch. D brings up the dimension and we can type 7 divided by 8. And then I can double click the existing dimension and link it back to that one. Horizontal vertical, clicking on that center point and our origin point will bring it back up so that it's in line with the origin. If you don't have the origin visible on the top left, you can toggle that eyeball to bring that into visibility. I'm going to hit S on my keyboard and L for line, and we're going to sketch a line. Now the question is, what do we want to sketch that line to? I'll go from the origin to the inside edge of this, hit escape to get out of the line tool, click on it once, and I'm going to toggle that to be a construction line. What I can now do is take a look at the McMaster car print, and I can see that the inside dimension is 2 and 9 sixteenths. So I hit D on my keyboard to dimension it, and I can actually just type 2 and 9 divided by 16, hit enter, except it needs to be the radius. So I'll do that whole thing divided by 2. Now if we toggle back to the McMaster version, there's a couple features here that we want to go ahead and include in this initial sketch. And that's the reason I love this approach. And I think it's the best approach for a part like this. We've got fillets around the outside of the part, and then we've got a small groove running through it. Right click and edit sketch. We can now hit S on our keyboard, F-I-L, to bring up the fillet tool. We're going to choose the first one. That's the sketch fillet. We can click the left edge and the top edge, and we'll just say 50 thousands. And we can now keep clicking these edges to go around and fill it all four of them. I hit enter to click OK. I don't want anything blue because that means it's not constrained. And sometimes it's hard to figure out what happened or why. I'll click on the blue and I'll start dragging things around. And I can't drag right here, but I can drag it left. And sure enough, my construction line, uh, which I thought I had locked it as horizontal, is not horizontal anymore. See how I can angle up? So luckily, Easy fix, click on that line and choose horizontal vertical. Last thing to do, S, C for circle, center diameter circle. I can snap to that center line and we can put in that grooved circle. Now, if you're new to CAD, here's where your mind's gonna be blown. It's actually really cool. And it's absolutely my preferred way to handle round objects, especially things we do on the lathe. S, Shortcut REV for revolve. What we want to do is revolve this pattern around an axis. We're going to pick that axis as the green built-in origin axis. Click OK, and we're done with that part. We'll split it now. Center rectangle. Snap it right on the center line, and we can dimension the thickness of our split. I'll click on that sketch, E for extrude, and I can change it to two sides, or actually symmetric is a little easier. Just drag it out, and we've now split that piece in half. So I think that's the right way to go with a revolve. However, it actually gets better, because what we need to do next is add the counterboard hole features to the part. And what I love about this method is we can go back and do that all from the original sketch. When we split it, we switched from one body's to automatically having two separate bodies. I'm going to turn off that top body now so that we can see our sketch visibility a little easier. Right click on that sketch down on the bottom of your screen, edit, 
hit C for circle, and we'll create two circles. I want to be able to see that sketch, so I'll just toggle sketch one visibility back on. And now what we can do, I'll click the center circle, hit E for extrude. I'll turn my body one back on so you can see what's happening. Direction will do as symmetric, and distance will just say as all, and that's now going to create a cut through this whole piece. Click OK. We've made our hole. Now we need to do the counter bore. This is really cool. Click on the outer circle, E for extrude. Turn body one back on. What we want to do, if you look, that sketch is kind of in no man's land. It's in the center area. So we're going to change the start to an offset plane. We'll click on this top part, and then we're going to further offset it by a distance, say a quarter inch. That moves it up there, and we can then drag this up to further that extrude. So what I love about this method is within really one sketch, we've been able to contain all the important information that we need for this part. We need that same set of features over here on the left side. I'll turn my origin back on, S M I R for mirror. And I'm going to change the mirror type to features. Yours is probably on faces or bodies by default. And the only reason mine was on features is that I was practicing this before I hit record. Objects, I will pick the last two extrudes from my timeline. Mirror plane, I will click the green blue or the Y Z. Click OK, and we've duplicated it. The other way we could make this would be the more intuitive way where we start with two circles, one that represents the inside and the other that represents the outside dimension of the part. Two and nine sixteenths, three and seven eighths. We're going to just kind of quick hit E for extrude. We could click that. I would still do symmetric and say the distance as the seven eighths divided by two. S fillet. Here we would choose the second fillet option. Click our four outside edges. Click OK. And the rest would be the sim a similar workflow. We could use the center rectangle sketch to split this in half, and we could use similar sketching methods to create the holes. However, you've created dimensions on numerous different sketches, and it's not nearly as clean of a workflow if you need to make future edits to the dimensions. Two last tips, but they're both really good. Number one, I recreated our Revolve component, except with user parameters. These are under Modify, Change Parameters. I use them so much that I toggled the pin to Toolbar. It's the exact same process, except before I did that, I created all my dimensions as named variables. So when I was in that original sketch, I wasn't typing in numbers, but rather I was typing in things like thickness or ID divided by two for the radius or through hole. What's absolutely awesome about this is I can then quickly and easily in one place descriptive names change things like the fillet dimension or the thickness of the split or even the inside dimension from 2 and 9 sixteenths back down to 2. The other great thing is if you're building a product or you're working on a team using descriptive names makes it so much easier downstream when you want to say change a fit or a tolerance or some feature where it has a model grows in size and numerous sketches can be really hard to go hunt down prior sketches. The last tip to throw out is if you wanted to use that original McMaster car component, there's some housekeeping that we can do to make it a little bit better. First off, it comes with two modeled fasteners. You really want to delete these from your CAD model because having modeled threads like this is a resource hog and it's usually of no value. Now, usually it would be easy as clicking body two and body three and hitting a delete key. The problem is that it deletes our whole model, and the reason is because the features are dependent on them. Luckily, you can right-click, and instead of delete, you can choose remove, and Fusion understands how to remove them without causing downstream failures. The other thing you can do, and this is so cool, but unfortunately it falls short of being perfect. I've started over in a new file, and I've re-imported that McMaster car component, and now I'm going to right-click and say, do not capture design history. So we're now in what's called direct modeling mode. And if you're a machinist like me, this isn't, may not be something you've used very often, uh, and that's okay, but there's a really cool feature in it, which is to drag a box around our part, hit S, the keyboard shortcut, and find features. Click that find features. You can choose and update this as you see fit, but click okay, and you get feature list and to the point where you can right click and edit a fillet. So this is amazing 
but unfortunately you can't convert this into a design history mode like I would like to, so where you could use it like we all normally use Fusion. Nevertheless, if you're trying to decipher a model, find a tolerance or a fit, or deconstruct something, it's a wonderfully helpful tool. It can be even be helpful if you're trying to deconstruct things like to remove fillets. It can be easier to do it this way than to manually select things. So folks, hope you learned something, hope you enjoyed. We've got tons more Fusion content over on our NYC CNC website, uh, as well as an online Fusion learning class. And if you want to stay up to date on both the stuff that we're up to as well as news in the CNC and machining world, please subscribe to our newsletter, Chip Rag. Otherwise, take care. See you soon.